Okay, um, so the first portion is uh, a background information of what's happening in this experiment. We are interested in this portion, the amount of bacteria left, which is represented by S. Okay, so S refers to the amount of bacteria left. It is inversely proportional to T minus 4 hours. So you write it as K over T minus 2. Okay, so this is after some time t. We need to take away 2 from that and we use a constant value k to divide by whatever is the result. That will tell us the amount of bacteria left. So this is our formula. But this formula has one unknown which we don't know what that is. Then s and our t are our variables. Then it tells us that in one flask, there are 6 units of bacteria after 5 hours. So based on this, we can find out the value of k, which is 18. That's 3 times 6 is 18. Okay, then now we update our formula as equals to 18 over t minus 2. This is now our formula. Then they want us to calculate the amount of bacteria left in the other class after 7 hours. Mm, not difficult, huh? t goes to 7. When t goes to 7, what is the value of s? So you, you can present it this way. I'll show you a various uh, presentation of when... Um, T equals to 7, S equals to 18 over 7 minus 2. So 18 over 5, 18 over 5, yeah, 18 over 5 units, which is 3.6 units. Okay, so this is one way of presenting. The other way, um, if you, instead of writing when t equals to 7, you can say it as s with a little 7 over here. Little 7. You indicate that, hey, I'm talking about um, s, a particular s relating to 7. What 7? t equals to 7. Okay, so that's the end of our notes. Anybody needs more time? If not, then we move on to our um, textbook questions. Start with the first one. In each of these graphs, determine whether x and y in inverse proportion. Oh, okay. Y and x. For the different values of x, you get different values of y as such. Okay, so when x is equal to 2, you have a value of y which is 20. When x is equal to, what was this, um, 3, our y value is um, 15. When x equals to 4, our y value is 10. So in order to determine whether they are in inverse proportion, we just we are trying to ask, do x and y satisfy, do they satisfy the equation y equals to k over x? So effectively, this is the question we want to answer. And in order to answer this, we can take x times y. It is supposed to be equal to k. If, it is, if they are inversely proportional. If x times y is a constant, this is a constant, then it means that x and y are inversely proportional to each other. Okay. So what x, what y? We get them from the coordinates. Okay, so when x equals to 2, y equals to 20. First step. Um, when x equals to 2, y equals to 20. x, y equals to 2 times 20, which is 40. Okay, that is the constant. But I need to check for the other values of x times y. The moment I have one set of, another set of x times y, not equal to 40, I can conclude already. Okay? Because if they are inversely proportional, all the x times y must be constant. So the moment I can find another pair of x times y not equal to 40, I can conclude not inversely proportional. Okay, so let's try a next set. When x equals to, for example, 4, y equals to 10. So x, y equals to 4 times 10, which gives me 40. 
Okay, uh, looks like it is a constant. How about the next? I didn't go in sequence uh, because um, I thought I was hoping that the last set of coordinates, which is much easier to read, would give me a value that is different, and then I can conclude really. But too bad. Let's try the next one. When x equals to 3, y equals to 15. Okay, so x, y, 3 times 15, and we get 45, which is not equal to 40. Therefore, x and y not in inverse proportion. Okay, so where are the... I, I wrote so much. What exactly is required in your working? Okay, one of this and one of the 45. And then the other 45, I mean. So one, two, three, four, five. These five lines are required. So the middle coordinate, x equals to 4, y equals to 10. I took a gamble. I was hoping that it will turn out to be not equal to 40. Then I wouldn't need to do the next check already. Ken? Okay, since we are on the topic of graphs over here, recap. What does the graph of direct proportion look like? When we tell you that when y, y equals to kx, what does this graph look like? So we have our vertical axis. Horizontal axis, x and y. This is a straight line. Compare with y equals to mx plus c. Okay, so by, by direct comparison, we know that this value of k is going to be our gradient. And our C value, which is our y intercept, is 0 over here, which means that it will pass through 0. And depending on the uh, value of k, if k is positive, it is going to look like this. If k is negative, it is going to look like this. K okay, of varying gradients, different steepness, depending on the value of k. So this is what it looks like when y is directly proportional to x. When one increases, the other increases. When one decreases, the other uh, changes by a proportional amount. Next one. What about inversely proportional? What does the graph look like? Y equals to k over x. If you recall, in the start of the notes, we, uh, the video mentioned that the graph is a hyperbola. Okay, on the right hand side, it looks like this. Y equals to k over x. Now, if it looks like this, then it is inversely proportional. Does your graph in the question look like it? No, it is a straight line. So it cannot be inversely proportional for x and y. Now in part b of the question, um, again they are asking whether x and y are in inverse proportion. But look at this. This is not the x-axis. This is the 1 over x-axis. So we do the same thing. Um, when Let's choose our values. This is 12. 0 0.1, okay, we have that already. Then this will be 24. And finally, 36. So do a multiplication. X times um, Y. Ah, okay, we, we need the X and Y values first, huh? When X is equal to, let's draw a table. One, okay, we don't need so many. Um, let's have our 1 over x, which is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We are trying to find out x multiplied by y. Okay, so the x value will be 10. This is um, 2 over 10, this is 5, and 10 over 3, right? So the inverse, we take the reciprocal. And we are trying to find out x times y, does it give us a constant? 
Okay, then now we include the y values. When x is equal to 10, that is when 1 of x is equal to 0 0.1, our y value is 12. And then 24 and 36. And we are trying to find the x, y value. So this gives us 1, 2, 0. 1, 2, 0 also. And 1, 2, 0 also. So we see that since x, y equal to 1, 2, 0, which is a constant, then x is inversely proportional to y. So even though the graph is a straight line, this particular um, relationship between y and x, they are inversely proportional. y and x are inversely proportional, although this is a straight line. Why, why is that happening? Because the horizontal axis is 1 over x. If I were to draw the graph of y versus x, it will be this curve y versus x. Compare that to y versus 1 over x. Okay, so this, they are linked. And the graph of, instead of writing k, I'm going to change it to 1, 2, 0, because that is the case over here, x, y is 1, 2, 0. This is the graph of y equals to 1, 2, 0 over x. But if instead you plot against one of x, you're going to get that straight line. Any questions? Samuel, okay? Samuel? Okay, then the next one. Okay, more straightforward questions this time. X and Y inverse proportion. So we know Y equals to K over X. Find the equation connecting X and Y. We find the pair of coordinates where we have X and Y values. Then we can substitute and find k. Now, if we didn't choose this, if, for example, you chose, ah, I want to substitute this out of coordinates inside. So you'll be substituting y equals to p, then k over 20. That doesn't help you find k. You still don't have k. It is useless at this point. If you were to choose um, this pair, then you will have, oh, y is 16 equals to k over q. Ah, that's useless again. You cannot find out what k is. Therefore, the only option for us is the first pair of coordinates, where we have 5 equals to k over 32. That means our k will be 160. Let me substitute that back into the equation. Therefore, y 160 over x. That is for part A. And now we can answer part B. To find the value of P first. P is a y coordinate. So P equals to 160 over when x is equal to 20, which is 8. And the final part, we are now substituting x, oh sorry, y equals to 16. So 16 equals to 160 over x coordinate, which is q. q equals to 10. These are our answers. Hey, now, um, uh, some context over here. The store, this is question 7. Number of trees to be planted on a hillside when the distance between adjacent trees is m. I don't really know what, what they are trying to say. Um, but, we have a table of values and we can work with that. Is y inversely proportional to x? So let's check. x, um, 1 times 900, that gives us 900. 2 times 225 gives us 450, which is not equal to 900. So we can conclude already. Presentation can be improved. I can talk about when x equals to 1, y equals to 900. When x equals to 2, y equals to 2 to 5, so and so forth. Then you conclude, 
y is not inversely proportional to x. That's the first conclusion. And now what about x squared? Is y inversely proportional to x squared? This question is asking, is y equals to k over x squared? To answer that question, we need to check y times x squared equals to k. Is y times x squared equal to k as in a constant? So now we need to square all the x values. Multiply to the corresponding y. See whether you get a constant. Can I just choose two and do it? Cannot. You cannot just choose two pairs of coordinates and if they are the same, you conclude cannot. Because that's what happened in question one, the very first one. I chose two, turns out, oh, they are the same. If I had concluded that, oh, 40 is equal to 40, therefore they are inversely proportional, then wrong already. Okay, you need to check all of them until you get one that is uh, not the same. So, I find the neatest way is to draw a table. I'm just going to extend it on the top. X squared. So you get 1, 4, 9, 25, 36. So I extended the X squared on top. And I'm going to now extend the graph below. X squared Y. X square Y. So this gives me 900 again. 4 times 2 to 5, 900. 900, 25 times 36. So really check them. 900, 36, time, oh, it's the same thing. 900 again. So what we noticed over here is that X square times Y is indeed a constant. So based on this, since all x square y equals to 900, which is a constant, then x, uh, y is inversely proportional to x square. So find the equation connecting x and y. When we have our x square y equals to 900, that is our k value already. We're going to substitute that back into the original equation. So part b, we have already done that. y equals to 1, 2, sorry, 900. Okay, 1, 2, 0. 900 over x square. That is our formula. Find the trees to be planted when x equals to 15. y, you can write down 15 if you want to. We can just say when x equal uh, not 1.5, sorry. When x equals to 1.5, y will be 900 over 1.5 squared. You get 400. Alright, so um, that's the answer. And one last question. 15 workers build a road 30 days. Assume time taken to build a road, inversely proportional number of workers, which makes sense. The more workers you have, the less time is required. How many days will it take for 5 workers to build a road? So let W be number of workers. Let um, D be number of days required. Then we know that W is equal to K over D. Whether you write it this way or you write D equals to K over W, doesn't matter. You still end up with the same value of K. You will still have the situation when W is inversely proportional to D D inversely proportional to W.
Now we're going to substitute in values. 15 workers, I'll just, um, I'll just work with the left hand side. 15 workers, K, they take 30 days. K, 450. Substitute that back inside. W, 450 over D. Effectively, they are telling you what, if there's only one worker, then you will need 450 days to do it. Okay, so now, part A. How many days will it take five workers to build the road? Five workers, when W equals to five. Five equals to 450 over D. So D will be 90. 90 days required. This is part A. Now part B. How many workers needed to build in 20 days? So 20, substitute 20 into D. W equals to 450 over 20. We get um, 22.5 days. Uh, wait. A mistake. Was the is the answer for K correct? 450? Correct, huh? 45 divided by 2. How can I have 22.5 workers? 22.5 workers, okay. Yeah, so so this one doesn't make sense. Therefore, we conclude um, 23 workers are needed. Workers. Ah. Uh, Needed. Okay, so actually, 23 workers, you will finish it just under 20 days. If you have 22 workers, you need more than 20 days already. So, need a little bit of interpretation and logic over here for this question. And that brings us.